Let me read to you a passage from the first chapter of St Luke's Gospel, verses 57 to 66. It's the Gospel for the 23rd of December. St Luke writes, When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown this great mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the day, eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, Blessing God. Then fear came upon all the neighbours, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. That's from Luke chapter 1, verses 57 to 66, the Gospel of December the 23rd. What does it suggest to us? Well, it suggests God's hand of mercy. Imagine this. A fire rages across part of the outback countryside and leaves smoke and ruin in its wake. People flee with barely the clothes on their backs and precious family heirlooms are lost forever. Among them, the family albums. The family photo albums. Ordinary photos that mean nothing to the general public can have immense significance to the family's concern. Fading photos, photos of great-grandparents, <clears throat> the old family letters fastened in the album with the ancient and yellowing photos, photos of the grown-up children when they were babes in arms, all now gone. Perhaps someone had spent numerous hours over many years, putting the photos together, and now there is nothing. What do they mean for those involved? The photo of that infant, who was the grandparent of the present father of several children, is not only a precious picture of a beloved ancestor, but it is symbolic of the numerous blessings that have flowed through the generations. As the family leafs through the album, it thinks of the good things that have come to pass from those past very ordinary beginnings. The great-grandfather, who may have lived a fairly ordinary life, considered in itself, in the event proved to be the source of so many blessings, principally the blessing of life to others to come. The photo, viewed by the family, reveals that his ordinary life and the humdrum events that made it up was in germ far richer and greater than it seemed at the time. The past is recalled with the present, the flourishing outcome of the past in mind. The past is thus perceived as having been richer far than was realized then. The family photo album shows that present blessings can be much greater than what appears, and their greatness can become manifest in time. More deeply still, the past as viewed from vant the vantage of the present can show that the hand of God, giving us good things now, is preparing to give even better things to come. <clears throat> the hand of God <clears throat> in ordinary events is a hand bringing future blessings and mercy to man. The spoiler, of course, is sin. Still, the hand of God is greater far. In our Gospel today that I read, from Luke chapter 1, verses 57 to 66, a seemingly ordinary event, the birth of the child of Elizabeth and Zechariah, is perceived by people as an act of God's mercy. God had been good to the couple and had taken away their profound disappointment. Their neighbours and relatives rejoiced as we heard, when the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, 
she gave birth to a son. Her neighbours and relatives heard that the Lord had shown his great mercy towards her, and they rejoiced with her. As with any birth, it was cause for rejoicing now, and it looked forward to good things to come. God's pre present gift was a harbinger of gifts in the future. But this time, the joy of heaven erupts on the visible scene with signs of the mercies to come. Strangely, the mother of the child announces that the name of the child is to be John. In Hebrew, your canon meaning the Lord is gracious. How did the mother come by this name? The father is called and asked how he wanted <coughs> the child called and he wrote John, your canon. This was a wonder and indicates to us, the reader, that just as to the father, so to the mother, there had been a heavenly communication of the name of the child. But then the father suddenly regains speech and praises God. God is intervening to portend in the mercy of the present the mercies to come. The special joy and richness of the present will not be left to the future to be understood. To a point, it is being revealed now. It is as if God cannot restrain his joy at the redemption which he has made to appear on the horizon. It is not being left to the future to appreciate. God is saying to the small circle around the tiny babe, Look, my hand is with him. I shall take him with me to something glorious. God would soon do more than this at the birth of the Messiah. The angels would appear rejoicing. The Magi would come to worship and Simeon and Anna would prophesy. The mercy of the present was being revealed as pregnant with mercies for the future. And so we read that, and I quote, fear came upon all their neighbours and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. Just as the hand of the Lord was with John in bringing about the good things God had planned, so the hand of the Lord is with each one of us. God's providence in our regard is a very, very particular providence. The Lord of the universe is tracing our path with his finger ahead of us and his kindly hand behind us. Let us look on the mercies of the past as signals of mercies now and in the future. Sin is the enemy of God's kindly plan, the sin within us and the sin around us, but God's powerful mercy is greater, far the greater. Let us entrust ourselves to the hand of God then. He loves us.